Asturias is one of those vacation regions that is bursting with natural beauty. It is not for nothing that Asturias' 300-kilometer-long coastline bears the name Costa Verde, meaning the green coast. In this video, we reveal just how enchanting and varied a vacation here can be. Everyone knows destinations like Mallorca, Fuerteventura, and Ibiza. But let's be honest, have you ever heard of Asturias or do you have any idea what to expect there? Many of you will probably be shaking your heads now, and that's no wonder, as Asturias is still considered a real insider tip by most people on holiday in Spain. We think it's time to introduce you to this great vacation region in beautiful Spain. The autonomous community and province in the northwest of Spain stretches from the Bay of Biscay to the Cantabrian Mountains. It borders Galicia to the west, Castile and Leon to the south and Cantabria to the east. The region is primarily known for its fine and beautiful sandy beaches, but also for its impressive mountain landscapes and picturesque river valleys. Here and there you will see an idyllic fishing port that invites you to linger, while green nature parks will make the hearts of nature lovers beat faster. Welcome to Asturias, one of the most beautiful vacation regions in Spain. If you like this video, please support the Travel Owl channel with a like, comment, or a subscription. Thank you. The small fishing village of Lustas impresses with its beautiful location above a bay on the Costa Verde. Other attractions include the Jurassic Museum of Asturias and the Playa de la Griega beach with fossilized footprints of dinosaurs. The village is a popular excursion destination with a fishing and sports harbor and a small beach. Lustas belongs to the municipality of Colunga and has just under 2,000 inhabitants. The historic village center is a listed building. This has allowed the historic townscape to be preserved. The old houses nestle closely against the slope that leads down to the harbor. The coastal town is a member of the Association of the Most Beautiful Villages in Spain. The old town center dates mainly from the 16th to 18th century. The combination of small palaces and manor houses with the fishermen's houses is interesting. The 18th century church of Santa Maria de Sabada in the classic Baroque style is well worth a visit. Above the historic center of Lastas is the small chapel of San Roque. The Mirador offers a beautiful view of Lastas and the harbor, the coast and the mountains of the Sierra del Suave in the hinterland. The city of Oviedo is famous among tourists for two things, the many sites that can be found in the city itself and the good food that can be found in almost every popular restaurant in Oviedo. One example of Oviedo's specialties is monkfish, which can be enjoyed in a number of restaurants in the city. Crepes and rice pudding are also among the delicacies you can find to eat in Oviedo. A cathedral is typical of large Spanish cities. The cathedral in Oviedo is called San Salvador Cathedral and combines different architectural styles from different eras. However, San Salvador Cathedral was predominantly built in the Gothic style. The San Vicente Museum is dedicated to archaeology, especially the art of Asturias. Many works of art and artifacts can be seen and admired in the San Vicente Museum. There is a second museum in Oviedo that deals with art, the Museum of Fine Arts is also based in Oviedo. 
The sites of Oviedo also include the entire Old Town, which is a complete pedestrian zone and is home to many restaurants where you can enjoy fine dining all day long. If you visit Oviedo as a tourist, it is advisable to try many different dishes, as Oviedo offers a lot for the palate. The vacation resort with around 6,000 inhabitants is picturesquely situated at the wide mouth of the river Sella into the Cantabrian Sea. A 300-meter long bridge crosses the Sella and connects the old town in the east with the modern districts in the west. The listed old town is grouped around the Plaza Nueva. The historic center is home to restaurants, bars and the typical Asturian cidrerias, where cider is served. As befits a fishing town, Fish and seafood dominate the menu. On the opposite side of the river is the beach district. Here, modern, well-kept hotels and the marina characterize the image of the seaside resort. The attraction is the fine sandy, 300-meter-long Playa Santa Maria. The beach promenade is lined with pretty houses built by wealthy returnees from Cuba. From the Paseo de la Grua on the right bank of the Rio Sella, a footpath leads up to the Amita de Gia Chapel above the estuary. The viewpoint offers a beautiful view of Riba de Sea, the river and the mountains along the coast. The outstanding site is a stalactite cave. This was only rediscovered in 1968. The Cueva de Tito Bustillo is home to wall paintings that are over 25,000 years old. As the number of visitors per day is limited, booking is essential in season. The small coastal town is picturesquely situated in a green landscape at the foot of the Sierra de Cuera mountain range. Perhaps it is fortunate for the coastal town that the old town and the modern vacation development each form their own area. In the center of the listed old town is the harbor, which is connected to the sea via a canal. It was from here that whalers used to set sail for the Atlantic. Colorful fishing boats are moored in the harbor and the houses huddle close to the water. Worth seeing are the town palaces and the old church of Santa Maria with an altar designed by Flemish artists. Part of the old town wall is still preserved. The Paseo de San Pedro coastal path runs along the cliffs, with beautiful views of the rocky bays, the blue sea and the green mountains. To the east, the Senda de la Costa hiking trail winds along the coast towards Penduales. An attraction for hikers, but also for mountain bikers. The small beaches of Yones are ideal for a refreshing dip in summer, the largest being Playa de Toro. Good restaurants and the numerous festivals in summer also make the resort a popular destination on the Costa Verde. The picturesque Spanish city of Gijón overlooks the beautiful Bay of Biscay, with the magnificent Picos de Europa mountain range as a backdrop inland. The city is surrounded by beautiful beaches and offers great architecture, sculptures and museums. 
The history of the port dates back some 3,000 years and its ancient roots can be found in the Roman baths of Campo Valdez, the largest and best preserved baths in northern Spain. One of the most striking sights in the old town of Gijón is the imposing Palacio de Revillagigedo with its square towers. The Church of St. John the Baptist and the sculpture of King Pelayo are among the other highlights. You may want to relax in the calming, impressive botanical gardens or visit some interesting galleries and museums. The old fishing village of Samada Villa is the postcard image of Gijón. This picturesque part of the city juts out into the sea on a narrow spit of land, dotted with houses painted in yellow, orange and red overlooking a marina. If you're feeling energetic, the city's many cycle paths invite you to explore on two wheels. A hike up the Ferro de Santa Catalina offers exceptional views of the coastline stretching out before you and hills known as the greenest in Spain. The buffons are a natural phenomenon caused by the action of the erosion of the sea and rain on the limestone cliffs, resulting in cracks and chimneys that connect the sea to the land. The impact of the calm waves against the cliffs causes the compressed air in the galleries to be expelled. However, on days with strong waves, air and water escape outwards under high pressure with jets of water that reach great heights. The most famous in Asturias are the buffons de Priya in the town of Yamis. Leave your car there and walk along the impressive cliffs that lie before you. On days when the sea is rough, the spectacle is amazing, it's a fantastic place, the views from the cliffs are worth the trip, and when the tide is high, the spectacle is unimaginable. There is a buffon's route that starts and ends in Yamis. It has a low level of difficulty, takes about 4 hours and is worth enjoying its beauty. This unique village on the mountainside is a must-see on a tour of Asturias. Next to a Gothic church, colorful houses compete for a view of the sea and the most beautiful facade. In addition to the typical buildings, the Casas Indianos await you. These majestic-looking houses were built by returnees from America. Even today, you can still sense the ostentation that these houses exuded back then. The lighthouse is also worth a visit, which you can reach via a beautiful path with a view of the sea and breathtaking nature. Outside the village is the Palace La Quinta de Selgas, which is known as the Asturian Versailles and invites you to dream and marvel both in the gardens and inside. Cadillero is fascinating, but not from afar. The village is the only place by the sea that cannot be seen from land or sea. That's what makes this place so magical, you don't see it on arrival and suddenly you're right in the middle of it. There have been documents about the existence of the port in Cudillero since the 13th century. Since the Middle Ages, people have lived mainly from fishing. This sector still characterizes the village alongside tourism. Cudillero is more enchanting for its charm as sea views than for its large number of sites.
green valleys, imposing rocky mountains and beautiful hiking trails are just some of the attractions of the Samiedo Nature Park in the south of Asturias. Peace and seclusion offer good conditions for a relaxing vacation. The main town in this sparsely populated mountain region is the village of Pola de Samiedo, which has fewer than 200 inhabitants. But everything is available here, a helpful tourist information office, a grocery store, a bakery, restaurants and bars. The Parque Natural de Samiedo is located in the center of the Cantabrian mountains and covers an area of almost 30,000 hectares. Brown bears live in the remote area southwest of Oviedo. Although it is unlikely to come across a bear by chance, the park is characterized by a scenic beauty that makes a visit worthwhile. The highest mountain, El Cornan, reaches an altitude of 2,194 meters. A quarter of the area is covered in forests, including beech, oak, ash, maple and lime trees. In between are green pastures that are used for agriculture. Large areas are covered with scrubland. Livestock farming is still practiced in the region today. The cattle were driven to the high pastures in summer. The Titos and Bronus, as the high mountain pastures in the Cantabrian mountains are called, are evidence of this pasture farming. The Puentan or Roman Bridge is the most representative building in Cangas de Onis. Its current construction dates from the late Middle Ages, but it can be said to have Roman origins, as shown by the thick buttresses and sharp breakwaters. The parapet with the paved path is the viewpoint over the cellar and a risky diving board for bathers in summer, as the bridge leads over a pool used by the locals for swimming. A wooden replica of the Victoria Cross hangs from the central arch, flanked by four arches on the right and one on the left. The Puente Viejo or Puente Romano, Old Bridge or Roman Bridge, is a graceful, rounded bridge with a large central arch that spans the river almost single-handedly with its large span. It has large buttresses, which are supported by rocks and give it stability and sharp water cuts. The side arches are also pointed, two on each side, and there are further small relief arches above the buttresses and the water cut. The bridge has a stone parapet and its floor is paved with cobblestones. The bridge was of great strategic and economic importance for the town of Cangas de Onis, as it was the only stone bridge spanning the mighty cellar until the 19th century. The detour to Cape Cabo video is rewarded with impressive views of the cliffs of the western Costa Verde, when the weather is fine and visibility is reasonably clear. The view goes eastwards to Cabo de Peñas and westwards to the even more distant Cape Estaca de Bars, which is already in Galicia. In between, the reefs and jagged rock formations stretching far out to sea, which extend as far as Cabo Busto, arouse curiosity. The small lighthouse of Cabo Video, which stands on the edge of the high plateau, was only built between 1948 and 1950. In good weather, the beacon has a range of 35 miles, approximately 56 kilometers, in poor visibility it is only 16 miles. The cape is located on a steep coast that rises up to 80 meters above sea level. Wind and waves have left their mark. A large cave can be visited here at low tide, although this is not entirely without danger. The rock formations consist mainly of slate and quartzite. 
Seabirds, including gulls and cormorants, nest on the rock faces. The Oscos Eo region embodies the western essence of Asturias. Its location on the border with Galician territories gives it a multicultural character in the northwest of the Iberian Peninsula that makes it even more exotic and unique. Of the seven biosphere reserves in Asturias, it is the only one with a coastline. And what a coastline it is! Lined with beautiful cliffs and beaches such as Penaronda, which not only delight bathers and tourists, but also attract pilgrims on the coastal path. But this area is not only home to natural beauty and landscapes, such as ports, mountains, valleys, routes, rivers and waterfalls, to name but a few. It is also an important cultural heritage. Forges and hammer mills, museums, palaces, monasteries, cutlery and weaving. A whole world of traditions that have been successfully and healthily preserved to this day, allowing you to enjoy the full spectrum of unique moments and experiences. According to a very popular and deep-rooted saying, Luaka is the white village of the green coast, and the first thing you will notice is that white is the predominant color when you look at this illustrious village. It is undoubtedly the whitest village on the entire Asturian coast. If you come to Luaka via the villa area, you can take a tour of the Indian houses, the residences of those Asturians who emigrated to America and were lucky enough to return. Walking along the watchtower, you can see where the locals gathered to light fires and guide the ships before the lighthouse was built on the top of Fosakan in 1862. You can also admire the hilltop cemetery, considered one of the most beautiful in Spain for its spectacular views of the sea, where the remains of Nobel Prize winner Severa Ochoa, the father of modern genomics rest. Other discoveries include the fishing district of El Cambaral and the Parque de la Vida, where you can learn more about the planet Earth, space and the sea on an almost two-kilometer long walk. The gardens of Fonte Baixa, considered the largest private botanical garden in Spain, are another major attraction of this terraced city, which rises between natural promontories and forms a dreamlike landscape. Spain's most special beach is located near the small village of Navas in Asturias, because at Playa de Gulpiuri you can swim in seawater, even though it is inland. If you walk a few hundred meters cross-country from the small village of Navas in the municipality of Llanes in Asturias, you will come across a natural wonder that is unique in Spain, perhaps even in the world. The Playa de Gulpiuri, a beautiful beach that is only around 50 meters wide. What makes it special? It is located in the middle of the inland, about a hundred meters from the coast of the Cantabrian Sea, and yet you can swim in the seawater here. The surf washes the waves over an underground cave system dug into the rock by the salt water. This is why there are high and low tides at Playa de Gulpiuri, just like at the sea, when the water rises, the small beach almost disappears completely for a short time. Incidentally, this unique beach can only be reached on foot, if you arrive by car, you have to leave it about one and a half kilometers away. You can also hike along the spectacular coastline, which is just a few minutes walk from Playa de Gulpiuri. Asturias mountain world impresses with crystal clear lakes and a fantastic panorama. 
The Picos de Europa are literally called the Peaks of Europe. The oldest national park in Spain is located here in the limestone mountain chain. Beautiful hikes are possible from the Enol mountain hut. South of Riba de Sea, the route leads into the Asturian Picos de Europa, first to Cangas de Ones, where the legendary first king of Asturias, the Visigoth Don Pelayo, established a small Christian kingdom in 718. This is still symbolized today by a victory cross, Cruz de Victoria, on the High Puente Romancio, which crosses the Rio Sela. In nearby Corvadonga, a popular place of pilgrimage, Pelayo won his first victory against the Moorish army. From here, a steep road leads 12 kilometers up to the idyllic Asturian mountain lakes of Enol and Ursina, slightly above. The two glacial lakes lie close together in a karstic panorama at an altitude of 100 meters. In addition to alpine cows, goats and sheep, whose milk is used to make cabralas cheese, you can also see ibexes and golden eagles. And with a bit of luck, provided the weather is good, even the waves of the Atlantic. The two mountain lakes Enol and Ursina are among the highlights of the Asturian Picos de Europa. There is a hiking trail from the Referio de la Viga de Enol mountain hut to Lake Enol. Silence Beach, also known as Playa del Silencio, is a public beach located in the town of Cadillero in Asturias, Spain. This highly regarded attraction is known for its characteristic natural beauty, which is characterized by a bay surrounded by rocks. The beach itself is sandy, but the coastline is also rocky, making it less comfortable for relaxing. The beach's clear waters and rocky bottom create a vibrant habitat for a diverse range of marine life, making it a popular spot for snorkeling. However, potential snorkelers should note that the water can be quite cold and it is recommended to wear suitable equipment such as a wetsuit or diving suit. Besides snorkeling, the beach is also an ideal place for picnics and leisurely walks. Nevertheless, swimming is generally not recommended due to the rocky bottom. Silence Beach is a popular destination and can often be very crowded. Visitors are therefore advised to bring everything they need for the day, as the beach requires a significant climb up and down. Despite some of these challenges, the breathtaking views and abundant marine life make the beach a must-visit attraction in Cudillero. The Gorge of the Rio Cares, Garganta del Cares, separates the central massif of the Picos de Europa from the western part of the Picos. The end points of the valley are the village of Poncibos in Asturias and the mountain village of Cain de Voldeon in Leon. The difference in altitude between the two villages is around 500 meters. A hiking trail of around 12 kilometers leads through the deep gorge, which is one of the most beautiful hikes in the Picos. The well-maintained hiking trail follows a water channel that was built here at the beginning of the 20th century to supply a hydroelectric power station. The path leads through narrow gorges carved into the mountain by the Caress River, through tunnels and over bridges. In between, you can cool your feet in the cold water of the mountain stream. The mountain village of Cain de Voldeon at the southern entrance to the Garganta de Caress Gorge. The entrance to the gorge is conveniently located near the village of Poncibos, which is around 6 km south of Arenas de Cabrales. The entrance to the gorge is well marked with signs and cannot be missed. An alternative is to start the hike down the valley from the village of Cain de Voldeon. Situated at the northernmost point of Asturias, Cabo de Peñas offers an excellent view of the Costa Verde in good weather. The cape is located on a protected headland in the municipality of Gozón, 
which also includes the port and vacation resort of Luanco to the east. The headland between the towns of Hijon and Aviles, which is often battered by storms and heavy seas, divides the Asturian coast into western and eastern halves. Many migratory birds stop here in the fall and spring. Seabirds such as gulls, cormorants, storm petrels and peregrine falcons nest in the rocky recesses of the cliffs. In summer, marine mammals such as whales and especially dolphins can be spotted off the coast from the viewpoints. To the west, the view extends as far as Cabo Video on a clear day. In summer, the Quattro Vientos Bar is open and invites you to take a break. The lighthouse building houses the Medio Marino de Peñas Museum, which is dedicated to life by the sea. The first lighthouse on this site was built in 1852 and then remodeled to its current design in 1929. The light from the beacon has a range of 41 miles, approximately 66 kilometers, in good visibility. This commercial city with medieval origins and a great seafaring tradition has a historic center with palaces, gardens, fountains, churches, arcaded houses, etc., which give it a unique atmosphere. The size and dimensions of the estuary, which runs through the middle of the town, make Aviles the only town in Asturias with a strong river at the foot of the old town, which is one of the best preserved in northern Spain. Aviles, the land of explorers such as Pedro Menendez de Aviles, the conqueror of Florida on the American continent, is a city open to innovation and with an artistic vocation. In addition, thanks to the iron and steel industry, today's Aviles experienced a great industrial revolution that has shaped a post-industrial physiognomy that inspired the architectural genius Oscar Niemeyer to create the last of his great international works a cultural center that bears his name and is a symbol of the urban and sociological renewal that the city is experiencing. This is Aviles, commercial, maritime and medieval.